Assessing the anterior chamber angle is important in helping to determine if the patient is at risk of angle closure glaucoma or if angle closure glaucoma might be induced by pupil dilation. A common technique to assess the anterior chamber angle is Van Herrick's. It is frequently performed prior to pupil dilation to determine if angle closure is probable. In this technique, to begin with, we form a nice clear section at the apex of the cornea as shown in here. Once we have this, it is a good idea to reduce the height of the slit so that it is about 3 to 4 millimetres in height. This will be helpful at the point of assessing the chamber angle. Now that we have a clear, short corneal section, we move the section over to the temporal part of the cornea as shown here. When we have this clearly in focus, it is important to have the angle between the illumination and observation systems at exactly 60 degrees, as shown here. In order to ensure that this angle is maintained, we can lock the illumination system so that it always remains at 60 degrees. It is important to have the section on the very edge of the cornea, and then we can increase the magnification further. Here, we have both the corneal section and the scattered light off the iris parallel to each other. This is achieved because we reduced the slit height and will make the assessment more accurate. In this figure, we note that the illumination system is directed at an angle of 60 degrees and it forms a corneal section. The light, after passing through the clear aqueous, strikes and scatters off the iris. The space between the corneal section and the iris scatter represents the aqueous. What we will need to do now is essentially compare the thickness of the corneal section to the space between the endothelium of the cornea and the leftmost side of the scatter off the iris. We can see this here on the image itself. We have the corneal section on the left and the scatter off the iris on the right. We now need to assess how thick the space is relative to the cornea. In this case, we can see that the optical space is two times greater than the thickness of the cornea. Once we have this assessment, we can refer to the Van Herrick grading scale. If the optical space had been between 0.5 and 1 times the thickness of the cornea, this would be assessed as grade 3. In our case, as it was two times the thickness of the cornea, it is classed as grade 4. In both instances, the probability of the angle closing is low. The placement of the iris in the eye is seldom symmetrical. For this reason, it is important to assess the nasal as well as the temporal angle. In principle, this is conducted in the same manner as the temporal angle. Just as we did with the temporal side, we form a sharp corneal section of about 3 to 4 millimetres in height and then ensure that the angle between the observation and illumination system is set to 60 degrees locking it once again to avoid any changes. In most patients, when we attempt to form a section at the very edge of the cornea, what typically happens is that the nose will get in the way of the illumination system, as shown here. As a result of this, the section cannot be formed while the patient is looking straight ahead and having an angle of 60 degrees. In order to overcome this, we need to move the whole of the observation and illumination system together, as shown here, by about 5 or 10 degrees and ask the patient to direct their gaze directly into the microscope objective. When we do this, the section can be formed on the very nasal side of the limbus, as is being shown here. It is important that the eye's gaze is directed at the microscope objective. Once we have this, we conduct the same assessment as we did previously, whereby the space between the endothelial part of the corneal section and the scatter off the iris is assessed. Then, just as with the temporal angle, we refer to the Van Herrick grading scale.